Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. June 1st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 12.05 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, a jam, jam-packed show for you today. Later this hour, you're not going to believe it. Hollywood rallies around Samantha B. Liberals and Hollywood leftists defend her calling Ivanka the C-word. In fact, they're going to give her an award. I swear to you, I've got that story. Plus, next hour, the Springfield House of Horrors. Local story, it has now gone international. And at 2.05, the Globe defends Judge Feely. I kid you not, they are coming out in defense of this arrogant, out-of-control judge. Uh, I have challenged the, deba- the columnist of the piece to a debate here on the Cooner Report at 2.05. We'll see if this Harvard Law professor and retired judge has the guts to come on the show. A lot to talk about, but first, my friends... I got to tell you, what is going on now with Roseanne Barr is truly, and I'm choosing my words now very carefully, it is truly sick, twisted, almost pornographic, political pornography, I mean. What they are doing now to this poor woman is sickening. It really is sickening. And as Grace told me over breakfast this morning, it really is true bullying now. So here is now the absolute latest. Roseanne Barr, there's finally been a, 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 she surfaced, there's been a a, a sighting of her. She is in her native Utah. Uh, I guess she's got a home there. She was spotted by the Daily Mail. And the pictures tell, as they say, a thousand stories. Sorry, a thousand words. The picture is worth a thousand words. What you clearly see on her face is a woman that is, A, extremely depressed, almost on the verge, I think, of a nervous breakdown. Her face looks immensely pained, full of anxiety. And Grace herself this morning said, you know, Jeff, if they continue with this relentless pressure and barrage, this poor woman may get a complete breakdown or, God forbid, commit suicide. What is going on now? is really, truly sick, unhinged, and demented. It really is. You have late-night comedians comparing her to Himmler, to Goebbels, to Mengele, to Hitler, to David Duke, to the KKK. You've got the Democratic Party fundraising off of her. You have liberal leftists smearing, demonizing, destroying this woman on social media, the backlash is I've something I've never seen before in my life. Really, I'm choosing my words very carefully. What they are doing to this woman, it truly is sickening. And for what? For what? This national obsession among the left to vilify her, spit on her, brand her as a neo-Nazi, as a fascist, as a white supremacist, as a a closet member of the KKK, as uh, this despicable racist scumbag, Uh, the way they are destroying this poor woman. Her, Her reputation is finished. Her career is finished. Her professional life is finished. You now have over 200 people out on the street without a job, People who had nothing to do with her tweet, screenwriters, producers, camera people, staff people, people who just worked on the set, never mind the members of the cast. Over what? One tweet that compared Valerie Jarrett to the Muslim Brotherhood and and, and, and the Planet of the Apes? By the way, from the same left, I mean, I've got to say this. From the same left and the same liberals who have told us that the Muslim Brotherhood is peace, 
that radical Islam is the religion of peace and that we all evolve from apes. That's what they keep telling us. Darwinism, social Dar Darwin. No, no, we all evolved from apes. We started off as apes. So if we all evolved from apes and the Muslim Brotherhood is apparently such a peaceful group and Islam is such a peaceful religion, what are you guys getting all worked up about? I mean, I've got to ask you the obvious question. And what's really going on here, and I think there's, just, there's no question anymore about it, okay, is, and I, as I lay it out in my column, the lynching of Roseanne Barr, which you can read at wrko.com slash Cooner, K-U-H-N-E-R, click on menu, click on Cooner's Corner, there it is. I'm asking all of you to please read it and pass it on. The reason why they went after Roseanne Barr, it's so obvious now, is because she supported President Trump. It's because this was a pro-Trump show, or at least it was sympathetic to President Trump. And I'll tell you why. Charlie Sheen, for example, did infinitely worse things over months and years. Orgies, sex with prostitutes, Cocaine-fueled uh, sex parties that lasted till 3, 4, 5 at night, okay? I'm talking about behavior that makes this ridiculous tweet look like a Sunday picnic. What did they do? They eventually fired Charlie Sheen, yes, after many years, but the show went on for another four years. With Roseanne Barr... When you look at how they're treating Samantha B, and I'll get to that, when you look at how they've treated Joy Behar, Joy Reed, Alec Baldwin, Whoopi Goldberg, Keith Oberman, Jamel Hill on ESPN, I could go on and on and on. They could have issued an apology. They could have had her do a big mea culpa. They could have so many things. They could have suspended her for a couple of shows if they really wanted to uh, send a message. Hell, even if they wanted to fire her, they could have simply replaced her like they did with Charlie Sheen and let the show go on. The fact that they canceled the entire show tells you everything you need to know. Now, what I found in particularly really sad and pathetic is she went back on Twitter, and this time Roseanne Barr has spilled the beans. She talked about, in particular, the encounter that she had after she issues her tweet, and now the mainstream media is going berserk. The Hollywood left is going berserk. The Democrats are going berserk. Now, now they're out for blood. Now they wanted her fired. They wanted it done right now. So, as the pressure builds to destroy her professional career as they want her head on a platter she meets with ben sherwood who is the head of the disney abc tv group she says in her in one in her tweets quote she meets with him quote i begged ben sherwood at abc let me apologize and make amends i begged them not to cancel the show I told them I was willing to do anything and asked for help in making things right. I'd worked doing publicity for them for free for weeks, traveling through bronchitis. So apparently she was even sick and she kept doing free publicity. I begged for people's jobs. She said as she stood at the meeting, begging and begging and begging, Ben Sherwood said this, quote, he said, what were you thinking when you did this? Roseanne Barr. I said, I thought she was white, i.e. Valerie Jarrett. I thought Valerie Jarrett was white. She looks like my family. He scoffed and said, quote, what you have done is egregious and unforgivable. I begged for my crew's jobs. Will I ever recover from this pain? Oh, my God. Now, I'm telling you, you look at the pictures of her, you be the judge. This woman is in serious psychological and emotional trouble right now. You can see it on her. One tweet is unforgivable? 
can I be honest with you? Murder is unforgivable. Rape is unforgivable. Many things are unforgivable. One tweet is not unforgivable. They wanted to get rid of her. And ultimately, I know I'm up against it, Brittany. But ultimately, I'll tell you the reason why. And you're going to think, what? What is Jeff talking about? The numbers are in now for May. The unemployment numbers. We are now in the middle of one of the greatest booms in American history. The unemployment rate is now at an 18-year low. 18 years. It's at 3.8%. This is almost unheard of. In the African-American black community, it is now the lowest unemployment rate in history. In American history. Latino unemployment almost now at a record level. So... I want to say this so the whole world can hear me. No person has been better to the black man and to the black community than Donald J. Trump. He has put food on the table. He has provided them jobs. He has provided them with an opportunity that nobody before has been able to do for them. And this is why they have to destroy Roseanne Barr. Because the Democrats have nothing to run on. They can't run against the economy. They can't run against peace and prosperity. So what they have to do is they have to gin up their base to claim that the president is a racist. And the way to do that is to bring down Roseanne Barr. You see, that tweet is racist. Roseanne Barr is racist. But remember the talking points. It started with Valerie Jared. The real blame is at the top. The real blame is Donald Trump. No, 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 no. Roseanne Barr is just a creation of Trump and the Trump movement. So Roseanne Barr equals Donald Trump. And that's how... So now Trump is a racist and all of his supporters are racists. In other words, they have to fabricate a scandal to so fire up and galvanize minorities, to so fearmonger that the KKK is in the White House, that the KKK is Roseanne Barr, that the KKK is you and me, because they cannot run against this incredible, booming economy. That's why they had to take down Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr's real sin wasn't what, her, what she said or what she tweeted. It's who she voted for and who her show sympathized for. Donald Trump. And that's the truth. And all of you liberals know it. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 1223 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, coming up next at 1235, Samantha B. I'm not kidding. The left and liberals are now praising her. They're defending her for calling Ivanka Trump the C-word. In fact, they're going to give her an award. I, I, I couldn't make this up, so we're going to discuss that. But first, uh, look, a lot of people are getting very worried about Roseanne Barr. So am I, to be honest with you. The pictures of her, she does not look well. She has now revealed that she practically went on her hands and knees, as she put it. Don't mean to be vulgar, but that's what she said. Like, I begged like 40 mother effers, is how she put it in one of her tweets, to have them not cancel the show. I cannot believe now that I have gotten over 200 people fired because of one tweet and the left is now dancing on her professional grave and as i pointed out i think the reason why they went after her and destroyed her wasn't because of the tweet that was the pretext the real reason again the numbers are out today it is incredible the unemployment rate under president trump is now fallen to an 18 year low 3.8 percent 223,000 jobs created in May alone. For African Americans, it is now the lowest unemployment rate for their community ever in American history. Wages are rising. That's the key. As Trump now is imposing tariffs, 
as Trump now is starting to cut off legal and illegal immigration, what you're seeing now is the labor market is tightening. Wages are going up for the first time in decades. So let's just talk about Africa. I mean, everybody's doing better, but African-Americans in particular, they now have more jobs, more opportunities and more money in their pocket than they ever have. No person has been a greater friend, no president, to the black man and the black community than Donald J. Trump. He puts money in their pocket and helps put food on the table. So, they have to now paint him as a racist. That's the only way to win the midterm elections, to rebuild the Obama coalition and get the black vote up in historic numbers. That's why you have to scare them, you have to fearmonger them, and you have to play the race card. And that's why they dropped the hammer on Roseanne Barr, and that's why, boom, within two hours of her firing, Valerie Jarrett was blaming Trump, and now everybody in the media is blaming Trump for what Roseanne Barr tweeted and said. My friends, this is propaganda, pure and simple. They are manufacturing outrage. Roseanne Barr should never have been fired. That's just my opinion. Connie in Charlestown, you're up next. Go ahead, Connie. Good afternoon, Jeff. Thank Hi, you for Connie. taking my call, sir. My, my pleasure. It's an honor to speak with you, Jeff. God bless you. Hey, Jeff, did you happen to catch one night last week on Laura Ingram's show? She had uh, Duke Gingrich on there, and they were discussing how Trump's numbers are slightly rising in, with the blacks. You know, he's getting a little more popular with the blacks. His numbers are looking good amongst the black community. And Duke Gingrich said to Laura Ingram, Jeff, I kid you not, he said, if his numbers keep improving in the black community, you mark my words, Laura. This is what Newt said, Jeff. He said, all they'll do from now to the midterm elections is play the race card. That's all they're going to do. Bingo, Jeff. He was right. But, Jeff, I guess something even more, more unbelievable. Last Friday night, Jeff, you can look this up. Tucker Carlson had Larry Elder on, okay? And they were talking about in Compton, California right now, how at one time it was all black. Right now it's only a third black. All the blacks are being pushed up by all the Hispanics moving in illegally and buying up the property. He said there's 22,000 gang members right now in Southern California, and they're taking a lot of them are MS-13, and they're taking their orders from the Mexican mafia, and their orders are, Jeff, to assassinate black people, just kill black people randomly. They don't have to be even in a gang. And one kid, Jeff, was killed. I guess he was going to college on a scholarship. He played football, not in a gang, and he was killed. I guess this is rampant in California right now. So Tucker says to Larry Elder, how come this isn't being reported? And Larry Elder looked at him like he had six heads and goes, you really think the liberal media is going to report this? Jeff, these are the same people that Nancy Pelosi coddles and wants to bring into this country. How do you think the blacks are going to vote if they ever knew that, Jeff? That they're being targeted for assassination and the Democrats are bringing them in. Mind-boggling, Jeff. Connie, can I be honest? By the way, brilliant call. Brilliant and brave call. Thank you, sir. Connie, thank you for that call. Can I be honest with you? It's even worse than that. It's ethnic cleansing. I I'm telling you, what's going on in parts of California and in parts of the country is ethnic cleansing of blacks by illegal immigrants. That's what's going on. Now, you talked, there is one media outlet. I want to give them their due. I have to give them their due. There is a piece, I want to talk about it later in the show, but let me at least introduce it now. In the Daily Beast, which is a liberal website, to be fair, it is called the Mexican Mafia. The Mexican Mafia is really the Mexican drug cartels. In that piece, they quote the captain of the L.A. Police Department. I want you to listen to this. Who openly says California's jails and prison system is dominated by the Mexican Mafia. In fact, they're so powerful in Southern California, they are quote unquote, his words, not mine. An illegal government. Then they have Mike Quinenes, who's a former Los Angeles Times reporter who has written on the Mexican mafia. He says over the last 30 years, as they more illegals have poured in, and the Mexican mafia through human trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, MS-13, they've, co they've co-opted MS-13, they now have more power in most California cities, towns, and communities than the mayors do. 
They order the executions. They order the mort- uh, the murders. They bring in the drugs. They bring in the illegals. And now they're taking over community after community after community. And they're driving out the blacks, the whites as well, but especially the historic black areas to bring in the illegals because it's a turf war and they're just taking more and more territory. It's a de facto annexation. That's the Mexican mafia controls Mexico. It's a narco state. The Mexican mafia has now moved into California. Where's Pelosi? Where are the Democrats? And I'm telling you, Trump is onto this. You take away the stranglehold that the Democrats have on the African-American community, the Democratic Party is dead. It's finished. If Trump just peels 10 more percent away from the African-American community, he switches everything. He creates a natural majority for his movement. That's why they have to vilify him as a racist. Okay, officials are unveiling the cost of the Mueller investigation. Oh, you got to hear this one. This one. Oh, oh, that's what your money's paying for. Evan Heidenrich is in the RKO newsroom. Tell me, Evan. What is the tab so far? Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. They gave her an award. I'm not kidding. She's being faded and celebrated in Hollywood and among the entire liberal left. This is incredible. I I mean, you want to, I mean, forget now double standards. Forget now liberal hypocrisy. This is something now on a new dimension. So... Samantha B, the rabid anti-Trump leftist comedian, by the way, I'm ashamed to say this, originally from Canada, okay, from Toronto of all places. You know, maybe you guys should think of now that I'm here, nice and safe, uh, eh, don't let even Canadians in now. I would say, you know what, don't just secure the southern border. Secure the northern border. Okay? Because I mean, honestly, as an ex-Canuck, I'm ashamed of this. I'm ashamed. All right, listen now to this. Remember Samantha B talking about, uh, this was a couple days ago, right after the firing of Roseanne Barr, on her show, was denouncing the Trump administration policy of separating the children, illegal alien children, from their parents, especially their mothers. And so she told Pres- Ivanka Trump, saying, look, put on something tight, something sexy, very low-cut skirt, because, you know, your father has incestuous desires upon you. And from mother to mother, you feckless see, do something about those illegal alien children and have them reunited with their mothers. Here is exactly what she said. Roll it, Brittany. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child. But let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you he listens to you. Put on something tight and low cut and tell your father to stop it. Tell him it was an Obama thing and see how it goes, okay? We'll be right back. Now, to call a woman the C word, is I'm, I, to me, I'm telling you, it is the worst thing you can call a woman, okay? It's not just vile. It's dehumanizing. You want to talk about sexist and misogynistic? I can't think of anything more sexist or misogynistic. Now, to me, what she said was infinitely worse than Roseanne Barr's tweet. I think there's no comparison. She didn't do it on her private Twitter account. She did it on her show, in public, with the full approval of her show, of the audience in the show. So, we have been calling up Turner, the headquarters, Time Warner. There's been an immense backlash. Samantha B. you could tell... Kind of apologized, but she's walked it all back. The Hollywood left is calling her a hero, a hero of the anti-Trump resistance. Last night, they gave her an award. They gave her an award. The Television Academy, famed for its you know Emmy Awards, gave her an award saying that B is an inspirational person who is being celebrated for her, quote, I swear to you, inspirational content on her TBS comedy show, Full Frontal with Samantha B. 
And so they, she accepted a huge award last night. Hollywood was out in force. Uh, her crew, her staff was with her. They were pumping their fists in the air, chanting hashtag me too, hashtag me too. The audience was chanting back with them, praising her for having called Ivanka Trump a C. Okay, the C word. The Academy itself said that Samantha B is receiving now this award for the Television Academy Honors. Uh, they want to praise her for, quote, lifting the wood, sorry, the wool-covered glasses from viewers' eyes to expose a clearer vision of what is really going on in the world. Full frontal with Samantha B doesn't just serve to inform and amuse. No, 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 no. What's far more important and complex is that she's not just delivering the news or just writing a funny joke about a politician, i.e. Trump. She's actually now, they say, providing an indispensable window upon the world. She's a hero. So they gave her an award. At the award ceremony itself. By the way, you need to know this. Sally Field, that famous Hollywood actress, said that the only thing Samantha B. insulted was the C-word. That, in fact, the C-word, that uh, Ivanka Trump should have been called much worse than the C-word, according to Sally Field. Because Sally Field says that the C-word is, her words, not mine, it's powerful, it's warm, it has depth, it's infinitely more beautiful than Ivanka Trump. That if Samantha B. owes anybody an apology, it's to the, all the women with the C's. Because their C's are much more beautiful than Ivanka Trump. Joss Whedon, the director of the Avengers, said she didn't go far enough. Hollywood is coming out and saying, he just, she just called her a C? That's it? She's infinitely worse than a C. She's much worse than a C. So, they came out in record numbers, they packed the place to tell her how much they love her, how much they adore her, how much they support her for calling Ivanka Trump, I swear to you, a C. Now, here is what uh, Michelle B. said. Sorry, Samantha B. Here's what Samantha B. said. Quote, at the awards, we spent the day wrestling with the repercussions of one bad word. When we all should have spent the day incensed that as a nation we are wrenching children from their parents and treating people legally seeking asylum as criminals. If we are okay with that, then really, who are we? So she's basically saying, look, I apologized, but really, should I apologize? She's kind of walking back even her, obviously, from upper management, uh, an apology that was almost written for her by upper management. She's now even walking that back. But then she went on to really show her anti-Trump colors. And the audience yucked it up. I can tell you. Because now, now she's unrepentant. Now she says, you know what? To hell with the apology. I can tell you. As long as we have breath in our bodies, and she's pointing out to the staff, and they're pumping their fists, and 21 minutes of airtime once a week, repeats on Saturdays, that we as a show will never stop shouting about the inhumanities of this world from the rooftops and striving to make it a better place, but in a comedy way. Our staff poured everything we have into these hashtag Me Too pieces. So the joke about Ivanka Trump was part of the hashtag MeToo movement. See, calling a successful woman a C, that's liberating for women. That's empowering for women. That's, that's good for women. That's not degrading and dehumanizing. No, no, that's, that's what we're all about. If you're Trump's daughter. If you're the daughter of the president. They wrote jokes through tears and panic attacks. They pushed each other to be honest and more fearless. I can only imagine what it takes to say these powerful, famous, sorry, to say these powerful, famous, admired men abused me and I won't be silent no matter the consequences. Me too. And then in a crescendo with the crowd now, they're going wild. Leaders of the hashtag Me Too movement 
are changing the world. And we are honored to stand with you and support you as best we can. There is power in saying what you feel without apology. Okay? And sometimes you also have to apologize. In other words, I swear, um, I apologize, but no, I didn't apologize. I'm going to continue to help lead the resistance movement. That's what she's saying. Now, I want you to think about this, okay? Roseanne Barr is now on the verge of a nervous, emotional breakdown. 200 people have lost their jobs. Her career finished over one tweet. One tweet. Now, let me be clear. She never used the N-word. She never said anything explicitly racist. She made a bad joke. Her sin was a bad, tasteless joke, at worst. About Planet of the Apes, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Valerie Jarrett. She insulted the cult of Obama, and they destroyed her. This woman, on her show, called the daughter of the President of the United States a feckless C. There's nothing more misogynistic, more sexist, more degrading, or more dehumanizing. You want to talk about bigotry? This is it. Not only does she no longer even have to apologize, that was a PR con job. They're giving, they gave her an award. And liberals are saying, we stand with Samantha B. This is beyond hypocrisy. This is beyond double standards. What they are now doing is saying there is a two-tier society. We can do whatever we want, and there are no repercussions. None. In fact, we're going to get awards for it. You peasants, you deplorables, we're going to hunt you down one by one. My friends, there is almost nothing more disgusting I have ever seen in my life than this. So my question now to you is this. What do we do? Do we continue to call for Samantha B's firing and the cancellation of her show? Or do we say from now on, if you're a conservative like the left, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, no matter what you tweet, you should be immune the way the left is. 617-266-6868. Your reaction and calls next. WRKO. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Twelve fifty-three here on the Great WRKO. Okay, Samantha B is now hailed as a hero for calling Ivanka Trump a C. In fact, last night the TV Academy Awards gave her an award saying she has now inspired people all over the United States. Larry in Belmont, you're up next. Go ahead, Larry. Jeff, I want to talk about this new California craze of exercise. Have you heard of liberal yoga? <laughs> these, I swear to God, it's so entertaining watching these people bend over backwards and twist themselves in knots trying to justify what Samantha B. called Ivanka at the same time demonizing Roseanne for her comment. It's a riot. Larry, do you think they're going to succeed? you think they're going to get away with this? In Hollywood, they will. Remember, you know, she got the award last night, but last week they were awarding Stormy Daniels for something. Well, shit. they gave her the key to a city in West Hollywood. Yeah, well, they also awarded her as being part of the uh, Me Too movement as well. <laughs> and resist. That was, I'm not I wish I was making that up, sir. It was part of that whole thing. She's a, a resistor. And I was like, what happened when that girl on her set that she was a director on got, got sexually assaulted? assaulted. Was she, resist she was resisting helping her, apparently. You know, and I just laugh because, you know, this is, this hurts, actually hurts real victims of sexual assault and rape by claiming this Samantha B is part of the Me Too movement. Well, Larry, let me ask you this, and I want to ask not just you, but Brittany, I want to ask you, and I want to ask the women out there. Are they now normalizing calling women the C-word? When Sally Fields comes in there and says it? Yeah, it has. I'm actually I was surprised. I didn't realize she was still alive. I know her career isn't, but yeah. 
It's crazy. Uh, Larry, thank you very much. It's crazy. I think you summed it up beautifully. It's crazy. Brittany, I've got to ask you. I told you this yesterday. Where are the feminists? Well, and now they're celebrating Samantha B for calling Ivanka the C-word? Are you kidding me? Well, it's, uh, they're it's, saying, according to Sally Fields, the C, forgive me, the C is powerful. Her words. Warm. I know. I has saw a, that. Has a lot of depth that, unlike Ivanka Trump, so it's an insult to all C's, she said. To call Ivanka Trump a C. I told you yesterday, when a man calls a woman the C word, the feminist will go crazy. When another female calls another female the C word, it's acceptable. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it's extremely vulgar and disgusting. And I am shocked that other women haven't come out and defended Ivanka. You know what the left is now doing with the C word? It's what the black hip hop rap community has done with the N word. They're basically saying, we can use it, but nobody else can. That, I think that's what they're doing. They're trying. That's, I think that's what they're... Probably. Yeah, yeah. That's why they're twisting themselves into pretzels. Can, yeah, that they can use it, but no one else can say it. But, you know, it's okay for her to say the C word and call Ivanka the C word. But God forbid Donald Trump, he used the P word. <laughs> uh, touche. Brittany, touche. Joan in Connecticut. Thanks for holding Joan and welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm new to um, uh, making call. Uh, I Welcome, wanna... Joan. You're among friends. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to bring up a statement. Back in 1947, there was a Senator McCarthy, and he did. Um, he went after the communists in Hollywood. Yes. And they were all put on the blacklist. Yes. Now it seems to be the opposite. Uh, they're doing the witch hunt on us. Joan. <laughs> Joan, <laughs> it's you're right. It's reverse McCarthyism. I didn't look at it that way. Yeah, that that's you know because I think I think Hollywood is communism. No, you're right. And Joan, it's it's communist hunting. You know, I'm sorry, it's conservative hunting. It used to be communist hunting because they were real subversives. Now yeah. it's communist hunting. Yeah, sorry, now it's conservative hunting. No, you nailed yeah. it, Joan. Joan, Joan, please call again, Joan. Okay, thank Great you. Great call. Uh, Eric in Utah. Eric, thanks for holding my friend and welcome. Uh, hello, Jeff. Um, well, with all the talk about I really can only sum things up in uh, one phrase, and that is, if liberals did not have double standards, they would have no standards at all. Eh, but then again, they don't have any standards whatsoever, but eh, what, can, what can you do? Eric, what do you think the wider public... What do you think they're, how are they reacting to Hollywood now lionizing and giving Samantha B an award after calling Ivanka Trump a C? Hmm. I mean, you think people look at this and are saying, this is disgusting, the double standards, or they just don't care what Hollywood does? Because nobody takes them seriously anymore. Well, any level-headed person can tell, tell that, uh, you know, calling a woman the C word is just as, just as bad as it, whether it's coming from a man or a woman. I mean, come on, honestly. But uh, it kind of reminds me about the whole uh, Dinesh D'Souza thing, how Trump pardoned him. And that, um, and you know, I was looking on, on your uh, Twitter, Twitter, and I'm already, already getting into argument with some uh, moon bats here about uh, the Dinesh D'Souza thing as well as other, among other things, but uh, that's a different story. And, um, and my only reply is, uh, well, what about Rosie O'Donnell? I mean, sure, what Dinesh D'Souza did with the whole... Uh, Political, fin- oh, I forgot the name of the crime, but um, yeah, it was campaign finance, my minor campaign finance violations. Look, the argument is very simple: if Roseanne Barr had to be fired for her tweet, then Samantha go, Samantha B must go as well. It's very simple. If you're against bigotry, misogyny, sexism, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I'm sorry. Then if Roseanne has to go, Samantha B has to go. Instead, you guys are giving her awards. It's sick. Okay, my friends, we're going to talk about this, take more of your calls right after this break. President Trump, I was going to, almost as my tease, Trump is now reacting. President Trump is calling out a double standard for the Samantha B controversy. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. What did President Trump say, Evan? Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.